Good morning, everyone. Yes, you're hearing right. I'm back to Jinglish again, uh, simply because a, it's it's too much work to do all the subtitles, even though Google kind of does most of the work and detects what I'm saying, but it kind of doesn't like my mumbling always, so it detects the wrong words and it doesn't do capitalization. In German, all nouns are capitalized, so yeah. Back to English, I'll do the remaining A2 videos in German, just for consistency's sake. But apart from that, back to English. I think most viewers will appreciate that as well. So, topic today is um, not EV conversion, but today we are looking into energy supply. So, to give you a bit of context, um, we live in a higher flat here, in an apartment, in a larger building. But uh, we do have the liberty to put up some solar panels, like the typical solution on the balcony, but also on the garage behind me here. And I will show you that in a second. So we've been running this system since 2015, I think. And it substitutes some of our electricity by solar power. But of course it only does so if we need the power in the very instant that it's generated. So I've been trying to charge the car while the sun is shining and we're kind of trying to start the dishwasher when the sun is shining, but it never really matches up. So what this means is that you're giving a good share of your self-generated electricity to the, what's it called, grid operator for free, because whatever we give back to the grid, we are not paid for. And that I don't like. So what we've done here is um, built, I think, what's called an ESS, an electricity storage system, whatever it means. Mm, and yeah, that basically, uh, once we have excess solar, it will store that into a battery. And if we have too little uh, solar power or no solar power, it will take the energy back out from the battery and thus reduce grid energy consumption. So, because it's a really small system, we really have to get into the economics, because uh, if I paid like a couple of thousand euros for the whole system, it would never pay back. So, we use um, our power of mind to reduce that bill, and that's what we're going to look at today. So, let's first um, take a look at the electricity generation, that is, the two solar systems. Okay, solar system number one, and I've just extended it with a 370 watt panel and some leftover 30 um, year old panels from my father's bigger solar um, plant. Um, produces around 500 watt peaks and its inverter is located in the shed that you know from other videos. Okay, let's go to the balcony and look at the other one. And here's the second system, um, should be the more powerful one. Um, so the other one is pretty much east and this one is kind of southwestish. So it gives us electricity um, all afternoon. Um, this is two older 250 watt panels, or 230 something like that. And that's also a newer one, 370 watts, and they are all connected to the same 500 watt inverter. Um, so it's overdimensioned because, yeah, we're just capping off the, the noon peaks, which rarely ever occur. So, yeah, smaller inverter saves money and kind of efficiency is better. Let's look at the storage system next because it's up here. Okay, so here's another piece of the puzzle. That's the actual storage system. So what we see down here is a donated um, 1.6 kilowatt hour NMC battery in series with some leftover LFP batteries because we have to match the voltage range of the inverter. Yes, next up is the inverter. Um, it says 1200 watts in here, but you can only set it to 900 watts, yeah, whatever. It was cheap, just 160 euros delivered. And it has an 
RS485 interface in the back to give it its power set point. And then here we have a Manson switch mode power supply um, that can also deliver 900 watts into the battery for charging it. And um, it has a, a USB interface in the back for setting the set point and also getting the readings out. Okay, and you see it's uh, currently not doing much because there's a lot of clouds. Um, so it's putting like 0.3 amps, what's that, 20 watts into the battery. Okay, and then back here we have a BeagleBone or Linux computer that does all the processing. So it receives the um, reading, the current um, electricity reading from the meter that we're going to look at next. And then it generates the set points for the inverter or the charger. And it also sends uh, those values up to my web server into a MySQL database so, so I can do some yeah, data processing afterwards. And you may be wondering why is this uh, located here in my desk? Seems a bit of an awkward spot and that's because um, I have network connectivity up here. I was going to put it into the shed initially but I would only have a very dodgy Wi-Fi connection in the shed so I decided to put it here. Okay, now the last piece of the puzzle is where does this beagle bone get its reading from? Like we want to know are we currently exporting energy to the grid or are we taking energy from the grid? And the best way to find out is to use the actual utilities energy meter. And it's a digital one, we're going to look at it in a minute. And it basically pulses out its current readings via an infrared interface. So I've taken this small, not sure it's going to focus. CNY70, it's actually a reflective encoder thingy that I bought for a different project actually. And yeah, basically it has a photo transistor in it and it picks up the data that's uh, sent by the infrared diode in the meter. And then we have a trusty ESP8266 Wi-Fi module that just reads that data and sends it via Wi-Fi up to our BeagleBone to an MQTT broker. Let's take a look at the meter. Okay, here they are. So this house has uh, three digital meters since uh, I think four years. And two are still analog, they wouldn't uh, cut it for this application. So this is our one and you can see the small CNI70 pickup head just clued on top. And let's take a look at our neighbor's meter, how it's pulsing out the infrared data. There you see. So the pickup head goes over here. And here I've installed the ESP8266 and a small 5 volt power supply. Let's take a look in here. Just a dendrite enclosure, generic one. Yeah, so it's all on a prototype board. We see the Wi-Fi module and we see some uh, level shifting electronics from 5 volts. Um, well, one to clean up the signal from the pickup head and then also going from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. That's all there is to it. It's permanently connected to my Wi-Fi network and sends data to the Beagle board on my desk. Yeah, so the obvious reason for using the existing utility meter is um, we don't have to install another one, which would add cost again. And also that meter is super accurate and also it measures what we actually pay. So there's no offset. So let's look at the software side of things for a bit. So we have, um, this is the string that is delivered by this little pulsing infrared diode every second by the energy meter. And it starts out with uh, some identification string. I am assuming it contains software version number and other um, naming of the meter. Then we have two times for some reason the 
a unique ID of the meter that is also printed on its enclosure. Then we have the current um, yeah, kilowatt hour counter. Um, total power consumed, this is the most interesting number. Oh, the total power in or into the grid or from the grid. Uh, so it can be negative. And likewise, we have three separate phase measurements, which can also be positive or negative. We also have, have the three phase voltages, but we don't really care about these. Okay, so um, I made a very makeshift parser for this. Oh, let's keep it open. Oh, go on. Um, and yeah, I'm bringing this to the good old open inverter web interface. Um, it's just for debugging, we're not actually using this. Uh, yeah, but we see the same info here again. Current um, uh, energy counter, uh, total power and phase power. Here we see something interesting already. Um, phase one, that is the solar array on the balcony, is delivering 117 watts, while phase two is consuming 116 watts. So it's consuming the power that is left over from phase one and puts it into the battery down here, which is on phase two. Good. So um, more importantly, this ESP module sends this uh, very data via MQTT to the little beagle board down here in the below the table, and that then continues processing. So it's yeah, every second it receives uh, the P total and then decides whether to switch on the charger or the inverter and how much power to command to them in order to have zero power consumption. And we look at the details in a second. Um, I will not show any source code just yet because it's going to be on GitHub. I will link, uh, link it in down below, um, but it's not pretty yet. So yeah, not good to show anything. So, um, and then also on the Beagle board, we have another script that takes uh, the data from MQTT and sends it, sends it into uh, a MySQL database on my web server. And yeah, that then has um, very detailed uh, data about power consumption. I, and I can think of any of some data processing that I want to do afterwards with all the data recorded. So yeah, we have a time step here. Again, same data as shown before. And here we have an extra item called PBAT. And that is the um, power that's currently put into the battery or taken from the battery. And yeah, here we do a bit of integration, like how much uh, energy have we put into the battery, how much have we taken out, um, how much solar power or solar energy has not been used. Um, and then finally here we have e-auto, meaning electric car, um, and that is simply the energy consumed over phase three, because phase three uh, charges the electric car and there's not much else connected to it. I think one, one of the hot plates in the kitchen. But, so we have a bit of cooking in here as well, but it's not um, too much. Okay, and then down here we have a real-time plot of uh, the power. Uh, you can see I've sort of programmed this to try and stay below zero, so sort of don't charge the battery from the grid. Uh, I think 10 watts is supposed to stay below zero, and it's kind of on average, well, does merely 5 watts. Okay, now let's see what happens if we switch on a load. You can already see a spike right here. Uh, I think that's when the fridge uh, turned on. So look at two things, one the real-time plot and one uh, the battery power. So let's start with a small load, which is my soldering iron, which takes about 50 watts when it starts up. Yep, here's well, it's even 80 watts. And you can see the uh, controller counteracting that. And now we can see the battery power has dropped from 130 to 84. Let's turn it off again. And we have a little spike into the other direction. 
And here we go again, back to 120 watts into the battery. Let's also check what happens if we switch on a larger load. Um, not sure if it's, this is wide angled enough, but I have brought a kettle along here. Um, yeah, switch it on. Big two and a half kilowatt load. And now, okay, you can hear the kettle. And now you see uh, P battery has changed to minus 900 watts, which is the maximum that the inverter can deliver. Yeah, so we're not. So the kettle uh, it takes in two and a half kilowatts, but we're only pulling one and a half kilowatts from the grid. Let's turn it off. Large negative spike because it takes a while to realize that the load is gone. We only have one second update rate, so that limits our um, regulation speed. And then we have a bit of an overshoot when the charger kicks in and things stabilize after that. Yep, most uh, challenging situation for this um, for the controllers is uh, changing solar irradiation. So yesterday we had very strong winds and clouds which would cover the, the solar array every now and then and within seconds you would jump from um, no solar power to like or hardly any solar power to full solar power like 900 watts and then back down to zero and yeah that's very harsh on the controllers but they kind of cope you also see this kind of swinging back and forth all right um I think that should be it on the topic for today. If there's any other surprises, I will make a follow-up video and we'll say for now, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.